So, well, hello everyone and thanks for joining today's PTC Talks, uh, where we are happy by having Rodrigo Alves, who is the EMEA Lead of Sustainability and Energy Management at Calypso, a Rockwell comp automation company, for a session on the way of sustainability and optimized energy management. But first, a very quick introduction about myself. My name is Torben Peterson and I'm the Alliance Manager for PTC in the Nordics and we are running all these PTC talks webinars on a weekly basis. Same time where we also invite customers and partners for some inspiration on digital transformation to see what is possible and how to make things happen. And all the past webinars have also been recorded and are to be found on the registration site. And the agenda for today is first a very quick overview of PTC by my colleague Carl from the customer success team. And then Rodrigo will start by introducing himself and touch base on a few challenges how to address these and then explain some of the business outcomes. And at the end, we are also having a Q&A session, so please keep your questions to the end. Or you could also put them in the chat and we will pick them up later on. So now over to you, Carl. Thank you, Tobe. So PTC is an international software company with headquarters based in Boston. We are developing software mainly for manufacturing companies since 1985. We offer tools for the digital transformation, such as CAD for design, PLM for managing data, IoT to connect products and manufacturing operations, and augmented reality to visualize and interact with the digital thread. To you, Rodrigo. All right. So, hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Rodrigo Alves. I lead uh, Calypso's uh, cap capability and sustainability and energy management here in EMEA. All right. Yeah. So, thanks for this. Uh, hey, everyone. Um, Good morning. Uh, I should say good morning for most of you, or maybe good afternoon. Some of you may already have lunch here. Um, so, you know, it's really nice to meet you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank here for uh, this amazing opportunity that PTC uh, is giving myself, is giving Calypso to be here with you today, speaking about uh, something that is very important, uh, that is really changing the way that we run our operations and make business nowadays, which is sustainability. Um, and you know a particular focus in energy management. So I you know I just introduced myself, but again, uh, I, I'm a manager, I'm a certified energy manager, I also certified scrum master. I'm based here in the UK uh, out of London, and I lead Calypso's operations in projects, business development, and sustainability and energy management. And today, you know, we'd like to talk about first of all, you know, Calypso, you know, who are who are we? Uh, then talk about sustainability, what is moving, uh, you know, how organizations all over the world, and especially in Europe, are uh, addressing their agenda around the topic. And uh, we're going to talk about technology and how digital, uh, through the use of uh, especially like PTC platforms, we are able to, we have been able to uh, uncover significant business values uh, to organizations and help them also to thrive in their sustainability journey. All right. So first of all, uh, for those who uh, you know may not be familiar with us, uh, we Calypso, we are a consulting firm. We were established in 2004 and we got acquired by uh, Rock Automation in, 20, in 2020. And uh, we became today, uh, we are today the digital arm, the digital services business of Rock Automation. Um, among our competencies, uh, we serve a wide range of industries. Uh, from life science, consumer, industrial high tech, any industry actually that you could imagine of metals and mining, energy, oil and gas, pharma, um, out automotive. And, uh, you know, what we provide is uh, first and foremost, like manage, uh, manage uh, consulting services, right? Helping clients, uh, our clients in uh, uh, solving business problems, creating strategies, uh, for operations and uh, relying uh, most, you know, most of what we do in the use of digital technology. So, you know, we bring to the table not only our industrial expertise, but also our uh, very in-depth experience in uh, the deployment and use of digital from uh, our data science and, and uh, artificial intelligence capabilities to deployment of digital technology, such as, such as the digital twin, digital threads, um, across the, the whole value chain from, you know, product development to manufacturing to supply chain um, and also uh, some range of services in, in, in managed services, cloud infrastructure and hosting. Um, and sustainability, as you uh, can see here, 
Uh, it is a, uh, you know, it, it's an arm of our consulting business. OK, um, and uh, and that's what we want to focus here today. So. All right, just changing here to the laser to help me. Um, to move on just a second. All right, so uh, from uh, you know the use of digital uh, and, and supporting the digital threads and you know what we say like the, the creating uh, enabling the connected enterprise, uh, you know we have uh, a few different pillars that we work with. From as I've mentioned, you know supply chain innovation, uh, planning and resource optimization, advanced simulation, emulation, deployment of digital twins, closed loop optimization, so automating processes automatically in order to re increase productivity, reduce uh, uh, resource waste, digital performance management, you know, deployment of like PTC, GPM, predictive maintenance, sustainability and energy management, and connected force. Now, um, from a sustainability point of view, uh, what I want to, first of all, like I'd like to talk here, you know, what's moving the overall industry, right? Not only Rockwell, Calypso, PTC, but really any company out there, right? Um, you know, uh, what we say is that what we're leaving right now is a second wave of sustainability that came to stay. And the reason why it came to stay is uh, because if there were doubts in the past on the business value of sustainability, there's no longer any doubt. And uh, this is actually uh, catalyzing uh, the process of investment in technology in every company at any sector. And some of the reasons here are right, on the business values for organizations uh, that I'd like to share here, and some of some of them you may be familiar, right, is um, improving brand reputation, goodwill, right? So some data here to back this up, you know, 75% of emerging consumers are willing to pay more for environment, environmentally sustainable products, especially here in Europe. Uh, reduction of materials and any consumption. As you became more become more sustainable, that means you're reducing waste, you're reducing energy being consumed, and therefore uh, you're reducing costs associated to uh, research and your operations. Permitting entry in increasingly regulated markets. Today, we have 40 regulations across the globe, like countries and more and more countries that we're seeing are establishing new regulations on um, enforcing sustainability reporting, enforcing requirements on energy management and sustainability. Improving company culture and employee engagement. So especially now with the new generations coming into the workplace, uh, you know, what we see is that uh, those employees and just overall, right, 65% of employees are more likely to work for a company with a strong environmental practice. And then also, you know, increased top and bottom line from recycling programs uh, leading to millions of like landfill taxes re reduction. And then, you know, aside from the business uh, value, how companies uh, can uh, achieve this, right, uh, create a sustainability agenda and, and uh, invest on this. There are uh, significant fundings from gover governments uh, uh, all over the world. And here in Europe, not only the EU, uh, from some of the, the programs such as Invest, e Invest EU on investments on sustainable infrastructure, Digital Europe supports you know, the strengthening of Europe's digital capability, the cohesion funds as well, but also particular funds that governments, uh, and I can say here in the UK, for example, that have recently been released on supporting companies uh, on investment sustainability and even more investment in digital technology to enable sustainability. Now, um, this uh, uh, the overall sustainability agenda got uh, a particular catalyst in the past year, right? And uh, we all know, uh, you know, the, the global uh, energy crisis that we're living, which is even uh, has been worse here in Europe, right? We have experienced uh, 40 to 45 percent of energy bills increases in electricity, gas, and this is forecasted to increase even further um, in the next year. And, you know, I, partic I, I myself and I'm speaking to uh, customers all over Europe and what we see right now that uh, operations companies are bleeding, right? Um, they're bleeding because uh, it's difficult to cope with energy bills. If you think of, you know, a small to medium facility in Europe today uh, can consume something at least around uh, a few millions of euros per year. So with increase in 40, 45 percent with, you know, leading to 
maybe like a 100% of increase, that is drastic, right? That has a major impact on um, on operations and uh, profitability of organizations. So this is really driving the sustainability agenda um, in the industry, right? Companies are looking to energy transitions, investments in cogenerations, in renewables, uh, investing in ways to reduce uh, consumption and costs associated to energy, uh, upgrading, updating their energy management systems. So using, uh, thinking in, on, on how to use digital technology to orchestrate energy data, uh, increased presence of meterings, improved reporting, forecasting um, to reduce risks associated to energy costs and vulnerability, right, to energy costs, uh, developing a strategy to, uh, to achieve net zero targets because simply uh, as you reduce your energy consumption, the electricity you're purchasing, you are reducing your environmental impact. And, uh, you know, that comes along with the with the energy agenda. And, you know, really thinking on ways on how uh, you can use digital technology, leverage analytics, uh, close loop control, uh, AI to optimize processes and uh, achieve more significant uh, cost savings in energy. All right. So. Well, we Calypso, we deliver uh, through the use of digital technology, what we call the digital thread. All right. So uh, the digital thread is the idea of establishing a seamless flow of data and processes that connect the whole value chain from product development, uh, from R&D product development to manufacturing, inbound and outbound logistics, uh, all the way to depending on the industry of that product, reaching the final consumer and uh, ensuring the longevity of that product. Now, the digital threat has uh, many, uh, uh, it can bring many values to companies overall on breaking through silos, reducing iterations uh, in between departments, uh, bringing products fast to market. But from a sustainability standpoint, it can also be um, a pillar to power that uh, the, the capability on the area. And reason being is sustainability comes down to understand your environmental impact. Um, companies have to report this following the green, greenhouse gas for, uh, protocol. And that entails to basically calculate your carbon footprint and other greenhouse gas footprint across your value chain. So what's the emissions that you're responsible for uh, developing a product, remissions on inbound logistics, getting raw materials to your productions, producing your products, right? The energy you're consuming, you're purchasing, getting your products to your retail, to your final consumer, uh, all the way to when that product is disposed and reused. So we Calypso, uh, we deliver the digital threads to create the traceability, the transparency of your environmental impact across the value chain, across the digital threads. And you know we work with different uh, use cases um, on uh, diminishing this, right? Because that's the main point here: is being able to have the traceability, but diminishing the environmental impact. So uh, you know, for instance, um, through the use of um, uh, pro, uh, PLM, right? Some of like PTC technology, such as wind chill, uh, we're able to establish ways uh, on. Uh, helping companies to provide to develop like eco design, uh, looking to uh, manners to uh, develop products, uh, substituting raw materials, uh, thinking uh, upfront on the production process, on the life cycle assessment of that product, and uh, thinking and addressing better ways to diminish the amount of carbon, the emission amount of uh, carbon footprints since earlier on, right? Reducing iterations with production. And when it comes to production, you know, very focused on orchestrating the energy data, uh, uh, establishing enabling energy efficiency projects, uh, dispatching energy uh, uh, more uh, accurately and more effectively, right? From whatever is being purchased, from renewables on sites, and overall reducing yield uh, losses, right? And then like across the value chain, I've already touched some examples, right? Digital supply chain, looking into ways on how you can get products to retailers, to your final consumers in a more a sustainable way, right? Um, reducing freights, uh, fuel overall. Uh, on the usage, through the use of like technology, depending on the industry, how to provide services to clients, running predictive maintenance, and, and then also establishing better ways for uh, on the end of the life cycle, when the product is to be disposed, how they can product be reused, redistributed in other uh, industry and start uh, practicing circular economy principles. 
All right. So we want to take a look now into uh, the production side, right? The pure, the direct energy management that you can do through the use of digital technology. And to do this, I first like to introduce you uh, a energy management maturity model. So this is a model that uh, we Calypso we work with our clients to first of all try to understand at each at which stage a client can be, uh, your co your company can be uh, on your maturity model. Either you are at a disparate level, which means you may not have like a, a specific energy management strategy policy in place. You have silo data sources. You're uh, you. Maybe you you practice some of your energy management uh, uh, processes on a manual basis on Excel, um, probably very late on the process on uh, not having the ability to forecast to confront your utility bills, and bringing you to a connected status where um, you're integrating your IT and your OT systems, uh, establishing dashboards, defining energy management KPIs. Uh, energy baseline, start using alerts, notifications, ways to anticipate problems because, before they occur, and use analytics to identify the best opportunities for energy conservation measures. And then getting you to the intelligent uh, status, which is uh, setting more ambitious targets, um, having a standardized uh, dashboards and energy management procedures and policies all over your sites. Uh, start using analytics such as predictive and prescriptive analytics to identify uh, further energy cons uh, conservation measures. And then moving to world class, which is really leading the way to achieve carbon neutrality and setting the industry standards, uh, leveraging uh, AI, machine learning, closed loop control to autonomous improve processes and improve uh, and achieve energy efficiency. All right. So, you know, this is the maturity model, right? Your organization can be in whatever the stage here. And what we do, you know, through the use of uh, PTC suits is to get you to progress in this journey and achieve world class. So um, today I'd like to introduce here to you uh, Calypso's SIM, uh, the Sustainability and Energy Management System. So what this entails to, uh, you know, is first of all, through the use of digital technology, uh, being able to converge the OT and IT data. Uh, seamless bring information and data from uh, energy meters, whatever they may be, electricity, gas, water, nitrogen, bringing also production data, right, from your MES system, from your ERP, other uh, data APIs such as weather, utility, and uh, through Kepler and Thingworks, establishing on, it, in the, on the IoT platform a very robust way to um, perform your energy monitoring, dashboards and management capabilities, uh, identify optimizations, uh, opportunities, track the return of investments of your initiatives on energy savings, uh, perform sustainability and carbon uh, footprint monitoring as well, native on that. And, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 as we do this on the foundation of ThingWorks, that really allows us to uh, be uh, uh, achieve uh, really significant results on uh, visualizations, management, and analytics uh, measures. All right, so uh, just uh, uh, just like to go like through some of the features that I've, I've sort of already mentioned. Right, uh, the sustainability energy management is an application built on ThingWorks. Uh, where there is already uh, a wide range of uh, futures that we can practically consider this an out-of-the-box solution, but it's actually highly customizable, right? Because we work with PTC ThingWorks, and that's uh, uh, one of the main values that this brings to us, right? Is um, uh, being able to customize, being able to make this suitable to your different needs. I have here a video of the demo running some of the examples of the screens, right? That allows us to have dashboardings, Create alerts and notifications on a UI, so very interactive the platform without the needs of like doing pre-configuration on the back end, uh, performing data correlation, advanced analytics, native models on energy uh, usage and power demand forecast, right? So a lot uh, helping you with um, your due diligence in risk management, financial management, um, and uh, also you know establishing the foundation to start using machine learning control opportunities. 
uh, we Eclipse, we can realize value quickly and early. So uh, roughly in eight weeks, we can deliver an MVP and have you ready to uh, to save uh, costs associated to energy and to scale this across multiple sites. And, um, you know, uh, just touching here, I want to uh, probably open some more time for questions, but uh, the key pillars of the same application is, uh, first of all, having a very standard way to manage your energy from an enterprise all the way to machinery level, uh, very focused on accounting and risk, so empowering you with the tools to perform uh, better for casting, budgeting, management of return of investment. Functionality to personas, right? So we go on with you, we understand the different stakeholders that will be using the different personas that will be using the platform to establish specific reportings that will suit your needs, your process, and completely hardware agnostic, right? Whatever you have in terms of instrumentation, we bring the seamless through Kepler uh, to the ThingWorks layer. And, you know, what I want to mention here is, uh, what we do with the sustainability and energy management is not only working with the energy data, but in fact is to contextualize the energy information with your production data, with your production information, right? So uh, as we establish the foundation, right, and integrating production information, what's your schedule, what's your yield, we can help you to better calculate energy management KPI, such as your intensity, so how much energy you are consuming to produce a single batch, and then identify, you know, where are the most energy intensive areas on site, uh, start using advanced analytics to optimize specific areas, either on your operations, uh, your mixing, chillers, packaging, you know, whatever it is uh, that fits your industry, but also from a facility standpoint, optimizing your HVC, your lightning controls, and really start um, building analytics to uh, have a cohesive approach on, uh, uh, achieving optimization measures on energy conservation. And, you know, when it comes to AI and machine learning, just here's like to share some numbers, some figures with you. Um, this is, you know, those are the nine focus initiatives that we work with clients. Um, so just for establishing the sustainability and energy management, right, we can, you know, we can help customers to achieve uh, energy uh, consumption reductions from 10 to 30 percent uh, just through the use of digital technology. Also working in uh, energy efficiency, demand side, demand response, which you can achieve um, very robust and significant cost savings on your utility bill. Uh, managing energy sourcing and distributed energy integration of renewables through digital, right? So the dispatch of different energy sources, how you can better use them uh, to be more effective and reduce costs associated to the electricity you're paying, to costs associated to labor maintenance. Um, also, you know, cogeneration is part of that as well. Product sustainability innovation. So, how we integrate product development into this so that we can orchestrate the overall data and bring transparency across different departments and cycles on your life on your uh, uh, value chain. And the, and also, you know, uh, EV fleet management. Some of the occasions like how to manage uh, electrical vehicles on site. Here I have some examples of use cases that we work with. Uh, you know, uh, for instance, uh, by the deployment of sustainability energy management system on a on a steel manufacturing company, helping them to better manage uh, their energy uh, generation and energy consumption, working uh, with global tire manufacturers on uh, deploying such a system on an enterprise layer, going uh, uh, to a site level, using machine learning to optimize renewable energy uh, dispatch on a cement plant. Um, using machine learning to optimize a highly energy intensive process to achieve cost savings. Um, also, we worked with a lithium battery technology company on helping them with distributed energy resources. So, you know, as you can see, there is a wide range of uh, activities that we can do on uh, being more uh, efficient in your energy consumption, and energy generation, and digital plays as a key pillar on this. To wrap up here, and I'd like to open for questions, uh, just like this slide with like some of the key business values that I went through, right? This, you know, we can ensure a, uh, with the sustainability energy management, right? We can ensure fast implementation, but also custom build, right? To whatever you have, you are agnostic. We follow uh, principles of protocols such as ISO 5001 and IPMVP to measure uh, energy savings. We con this is a key pillar for this to contextualize the energy data through production information, bringing standardization, 
focus on sustainability. So as you manage energy, you also manage the benefits uh, your, of diminishing your carbon footprint. And you're using the IoT platform, right? The thing works, which allows us to go use the energy management as an as a starting point, but then to explore other use cases as you're gonna you're already gonna have the data into the platform, right? And having the foundation to use AI. And why Calypso? Uh, we bring the industry knowledge, the very solid digital and data uh, ex, uh, science experience. We provide an end-to-end and end-to-end energy management capability from uh, supporting your understanding your. Uh, audits, your uh, your policy, establishing the foundation through the sustainability energy management system, using AI and uh, helping you to move rapid from an MVP within eight weeks to a scale approach and, uh, you know, enabling you uh, with the knowledge transfer, right? So we have our own uh, methodology to, as we implement this, you have full autonomy to take this forward, scale, manage as you prefer, and, you know, uh, establishing, we work with you to establish a value case so you clearly understand the return of investments and how the digital tool will help you to, uh, on the future, uh, getting your energy savings and cost reduction on resources. All right, so pause here, probably was off a few minutes, uh, and you know, I'd like to open for any questions that you may have. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks a lot, Rodrigo, for a great overview on this very, I mean, interesting topic and uh, your solution here. So, as I said, I mean, let's open up for any questions you might have in the audience. Who would like to go first? Anyone? Otherwise, I had one actually connected, I mean, to what you just briefly mentioned here. And what are the limitations of integrating with, I mean, multiple meter suppliers and any kind of, I mean, external databases, for instance? None. <laughs> oh. And that's the beauty. And the, yeah, and the, and that's the beauty, you know, of working with uh, uh, just the PTC suite, right? Uh, obviously, you know, we've been there where we faced uh, very specific, like customizable, like external databases, right? Or uh, different suppliers of meterings. And you know, the work that we Calypso do is, uh, you know, we can build connectors. Uh, we develop something that suits exactly to your IT architecture needs, right? And as I said, it's completely agnostic in terms of metering devices. So, you know, whatever you have on site, whatever is the manufacturer, we'll work it out and we'll bring that data in seamless. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Another question I had was actually, I mean, related, I mean, to your uh, sustainability and energy management system. I mean, how should you get started? I mean, and how, who should actually get involved in in the project? All right. So, um, you know, first of all, uh, please connect to us. Okay. So uh, you can also you can either uh, email me or uh, Elaine Colley, uh, the principal of Calypso here in EMEA, or Uwe Cooper, who is uh, uh, you know very experienced. Uh, manager also working with us in sustainability and just overall smart connected operations will help you in that journey right uh, either to understand if you are very immature in the sense of not knowing how to start off like do you even you know asking questions such as do i have the meters the right meters installed uh, where they're located like what's the landscape what's the foundation that i need to start using digital so helping you to you know hand walk you through the whole journey wherever you are so you know bring us to a conversation and we will, you know, we'll be happy to understand the challenge that you may be facing and design uh, a journey that will fit to your needs and to your business targets. Thanks. We had a question also in, uh, in the chat and that is, I mean, what uh, are the data sources for a CO2 rollout? All right, so uh, what we primarily start off here um, is uh, scope one and scope two, okay, uh, carbon footprint. So uh, that, you know, uh, from, from scope two primarily, uh, you know, we need to have access uh, to your utility contracts, right, Underst understanding uh, how, your, uh, how much energy you're purchasing, where the electricity comes from, is it like natural gas, is it like, does it come from like fossil fuels, understand also if you have um, re uh, renewable energy contracts so that we can you know offset and calculate the carbon footprint with accuracy so it depends case by case right generally speaking uh, you know we can do this uh, with the data that you have on site on in terms of what your metering is telling you but to have a more accurate uh, reading of the information we would probably need to um, contextualize your utility contract into it 
Um, and then, you know, as we move forward to scope three reporting, uh, that's uh, probably something uh, that would be tailored to each industry, to the amount of logistics that you use. And, you know, we will be defining with you the different data sets that you need to build up uh, carbon, th uh, carbon footprint uh, scope three. Thanks. Uh, one last question also, I mean, what is the flexibility for customization on your sustainability energy manager? Yeah, so as I said, right, this is highly customizable. Um, it's, uh, you know, we can consider this a pretty much like 90% uh, out of the box system, meaning if you're happy, you know, with the user interfaces, it's ready to be deployed and we can do this relatively fast. But if you want to create different sets of reporting, different ways you want to calculate specific KPIs, it's highly customizable. You know, we rely on the on the uh, PTC ThingWorks platform, which really provides us a blue ocean of opportunities of what we can do. And, and that's the role that we Calypso do is to enable you to get the full value of uh, the ThingWorks platform. Thank you. And I think I mean we have one last question also. I mean, and that relates I mean to uh, how do you progress to a closed loop optimization? All right. So you know, we set first of all, uh, we usually need to set like the foundation right uh, for uh, through the sustainability energy management right, um, and uh, from there we then start to understand what are the different machinery on site that are in that are consuming energy uh, in a more intensive in a different way right and from there you know we'll develop a journey with you to as we define the high potential areas right so we want to make sure you have early wins you have the return of investment you're not investing in ai just for the sake of investing but you're investing on the areas that will bring you the best benefit and you know we work with you to define those priorities and design uh, a solution that we will then you know implement AI uh, and uh, closed loop control algorithms to automatically improve your processes so that you can automatically uh, diminish research and diminish the energy you're consuming. Thank you. Time is unfortunately running out, folks. So many thanks everyone for joining. And of course, a special thanks to you, Rodrigo, for sharing a lot of really interesting stuff here. So with that, I wish you all a fantastic weekend and hope to see you back next week on the next PTC Talks about industrial supply chain traceability by Accenture. So take care, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.